Hi friend, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about exports in DaVinci Resolve and most specifically how to get clean, sharp exports with minimal artifacting but still small file sizes. I think there's already a lot of info on this topic out there, but I think it can be really nuanced depending on what type of projects you're shooting. I wanted to make a video for you guys who are following this channel just with my approach, kind of my techniques, kind of the main ways that I approach thinking about exports, both for client work as well as personal stuff like I'm posting here on YouTube. I think a lot of it has crossover. And so I wanted to share that info with you guys. Export number one is going to be H.265 Masters, and this is going to be my most common export that I use, especially here on YouTube, but also client work. It retains incredibly high quality with minimal artifacting, but also maintains relatively small file sizes. And so I recently ran an export and a five minute video was about 848 megabytes, so less than a gigabyte. And it took about two minutes and 15 seconds to export, which is pretty on par with H.264, which I'm gonna to get to in a minute. But yeah, again, this really limits any artifacting and banding like you will get with H.264. You're gonna to have to really crank the bitrate on H.264 in order to eliminate that. And so I've recently been trying out H.265 probably for the last six months and have fully adopted it just kind of as my go-to codec if there's no requirements from the client. And so especially for videos here on YouTube, they can be quite long. This is often what I'm using. Often, you know, people will talk about using ProRes to maximize quality on YouTube, but I'm just going to go with H.265 keeps my file sizes low. As far as the settings for H.265, you simply are just going to go up to the top here at DaVinci Resolve and click on the H.265 master preset. From there, I really don't change anything besides where it's exporting and the file name. Before we get into the other ones, I just wanted to do a quick kind of overview on DaVinci Resolve settings. So I am usually editing in a 4K timeline. This is just with the UHD preset and this is pretty much standard across the board I'm delivering most client projects in 4k and as well as these projects here on YouTube I'm also going to be editing in 4k so usually always editing in 4k and then I'm going to export in 4k as well and then the other thing I wanted to touch on was just Rec 709a and so I've talked about this before but if you are on a Mac there can sometimes be weird things where you, you know, what the video looks like in Resolve, the colors will then look different in QuickTime and then on Vimeo and YouTube, and this can be a real big headache. And so I solved this a while ago after doing some research, but it's really simple. You're just gonna go into your preferences and make sure and set your, I think it's the color space or the gamma, I'll show you guys here on the screen, but you're gonna set this to Rec 709A. And this has been kind of a secret for me getting consistent exports. What I'm seeing in Resolve is gonna be what I can view here on my Mac, as well as when I put it on Vimeo and watch it on the phone, it is very similar. There's no weird gamma shifts. So please keep that in mind when you're exporting projects, if you're working on a Mac, would highly recommend that. The next export type we're gonna talk about is H.264. And this is gonna be specifically looking at social media and most commonly Instagram. And so if you guys don't know this, Instagram only allows H.264 uploads at the time of making this video. If you try to upload a different format like H.265 or ProRes or something like that, it's just simply going to say you can't. And so you have to do H.264 for this. I'm typically using the H.264 master preset in DaVinci Resolve. This is going to default to QuickTime and H.264, which works great for me because I'm on Mac and a five minute video was about 1.62 gigabytes. And so bigger than the H.265 and it took around two minutes and 20 seconds to export. So very similar export times between H.265 and H.264. And again, this is really just what I'm using for Instagram or social media. I've noticed if I am exporting client projects or projects here on YouTube with this preset, I often will see banding specifically when fading in and out of a video or doing any type of like transitions. There's often kind of odd artifacting and you can crank the bit rate up to eliminate this. But again, we're trying to keep our file sizes low. So that's why I've just kind of gone over to H.265 maintaining those small file sizes, but I did want to put this here because I often am using H.264 for stuff that's going to be living on Instagram. The third type of export that I'm most commonly using is ProRes LT. And the two main reasons that I do this is one, if I'm wanting to export a project that will then need to get re-exported again, 
ProRes is great for that. And the second is that it does speed up export time quite a bit. So if I am just running a draft of a project, a lot of times I will opt for ProRes as it seems to export on my Mac way quicker. And so if we look at this for a ProRes LT export, a five minute video was just over 10 gigabytes. So quite a bit bigger than the last two options, but it took only 34 seconds to export. So much faster and again i would compare the quality of this very similar to h.265 it really limits any artifacting and banding and it's great for re-exporting a file as compared to h.264 so occasionally when i deliver client projects i will also deliver a prores lt option in case they are wanting to then take it and re-export some clips for social or for their website or something like that, I'll often use ProRes LT because it's usually high enough quality for most people. It retains information when it's re-exported, but it's still not as large as some of the other ProRes options. And so to do this, you're just going to go select the ProRes 422HQ setting at the top and then simply change the setting to LT. I've also used this style of preset for YouTube videos if they are on the shorter end and or I am really needing to maintain, you know, detail if I am going to be looking at comparing, you know, grain or something like side by side. I think there's been one or two videos where I've chosen to go with the ProRes export. But again, this is going to eat up more file size and then uploading to YouTube is going to take longer. Processing is going to take longer. So most of the time when it comes to YouTube videos, client projects, I'm just sticking to H.265 unless there's something that's specifically asked of me. But yeah, this ProRes is a great option if you're wanting to just maintain a little bit more high quality for re-exporting and have it there for archival purposes. The final export style that I'm going to talk about is a ProRes 444 XQ export. And I'm really only using this when I'm gonna be passing a project between team members. So if I'm working as a colorist, I'll often export this, or if I'm working with a motion graphics designer, it's great for maintaining as much quality as possible when you are passing a project between folks before you get to that final export. And so just for a comparison, a five minute video is gonna be close to 37 gigs, so way larger, and it took about 36 seconds to export, so very quick, but again, eating up a lot of file size. This is not gonna be something that you often deliver to a client unless they are wanting to you know, archive it on their end re-export some things for social or website or something like that, you might occasionally get asked for that. But a lot of times I'm just using this if a project is being passed between people that I'm working with, it's a great option. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful to you and hopefully a kind of non-overwhelming look into all the different options there are when it comes to exporting your project. Again, this is what I use most commonly. It's a question that I've been DM'd several times. You know, how do you export your videos? What settings are you using? And I just kind of wanted to make this just to share. This is kind of what works for me on most projects. Again, there might be a client or a specific person you're working with that has specific usage requirements. So occasionally there will be clients that really need, you know, a H.264 MP4 file instead of a QuickTime because they are on PC, not Mac. A lot of times clients are just hosting online, but there can be nuances depending on who you're working with. So always talk to your clients and ask if there are kind of specific things that they are looking for or what they're looking to do with the footage. You know, are they just archiving it? Are they wanting to post it to Vimeo, YouTube, their website? I kind of take all of this into account when I'm deciding how to export a project and finally deliver it to a client. So hope you found it helpful. Drop any questions down below or if you guys have any other specific techniques or common ways that you are exporting projects and i will catch you guys in the next video peace